having not a debate in the formal sense, but a discussion uh, on the theme of should the center loosen its hold on the states. Uh, there's been, as you can see, a little bit of a change of composition, uh, and that's one of the reasons we've gone off the debate format, but also because we believe the issue lends itself to a much more interesting discussion if we can consider all aspects rather than just go for and against. So I have four very interesting panelists. I'm um, just trying to turn off my phone here. Um, and I'd like to introduce them in the order in which uh, they will speak um, to begin with. We'll have a conversation for about 40 minutes, at the end of which we'll come to you for another 20, 25 minutes of your questions. So think about these issues and see what you'd like to ask. We have Priyanka Chaturvedi, who's a national spokesperson for the Congress Party. We have Kunal Sarangi, who is, I'm told, the youngest MLA in India from the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha. And we have Jayan Chaudhary, who uh, is a leader of the RLD, the Rashtriya Lok Dal. And they're all, as you can see, young politicians. Uh, they're people who uh, have had some experience in the, in the roughhouse world. Um, of, of, our, of our political life. Uh, in the case of Kunal, he's the only one who actually at the moment is in a state assembly, uh, but the others have taken both a national and a state perspective at different times, and they will have a lot to contribute. So I'm going to start off by asking each of them to tell us very briefly, uh, maximum about three minutes each, the air, their initial answer to the question, should the center loosen its hold on the states? Priyanka, you go first. Uh, considering uh, how things are changing since 2014, I personally believe that uh, the entire system is becoming very centrally dominated, and uh, they're being asked to. The states are being asked to behave in a particular manner, follow a particular uh, pattern, which the centre decides for them. Which again goes against the principles, the founding principles of the country as we know it. We must remember uh, when we uh, became an independent nation. The idea of India is what brought all the states together where they believed that they could continue to be functioning independently while being part of a larger idea of the nation. And that is what our Constituent Assembly also came up with while they gave independence to the states to uh, follow uh, the way they wish to live, the way they wish to create their laws. But there was also an interdependence with the nation. And that is why we now see an overpowering center which is trying to dictate the terms and conditions to the state. So autonomy uh, as such, uh, which the states used to enjoy, is being undermined every single day and that is why I feel that we need to reduce the central hold over various states and we have seen many examples of it recently whether it is with your state Kerala whether it is in Uttar Pradesh whether it was in Karnataka when we saw how uh, the government uh, an elected government was thrusted uh, on people by the decision of the governor we've seen that in Arunachal Pradesh we saw it in Chhattisgarh we saw it in Goa so these are very recent examples which tell you that this entire idea that the Constituent Assembly had come up with is somehow being undermined and destroyed systematically. And that is why I think we re really need to reinforce what the Constitution has provided for the states and the autonomy it has provided to the states. Thanks, Priyanka. Kunal? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I will agree with uh, Priyanka to a great extent, and particularly for a state like Jharkhand, what we are experiencing in the last three and a half years, fine. I mean. People have uh, got you elected uh, to rule the country. It's absolute. We accept the verdict, we accept the mandate, everything. But the way the central government is behaving, at least uh, uh, this particular government, and it is interfering with almost everything that ideally the state should be dealing with. And in, in a, I will just give you a very uh, small example. Uh, there is a Niti Aayog. Now, Niti Aayog is an advisory body. But what the Niti Aayog has done in Jharkhand, they have kind of um, instructed or advised the state government to merge the schools. Now in Jharkhand, in a place like Jharkhand, particularly the constituency that I represent, there are schools or there are you know schools which are 12 kilometers away from each other and they have closed down those schools. Now the children are not going to the schools anymore. They are sitting at home. Villagers are running parallel schools with their own resources. And the state government has the logic that because the Niti Aayog has said this uh, to be done, to be executed, they are utilizing their machinery, their administrative power, everything. 
also people are protesting people are going on i mean on a rampage uh, many violent protests have also taken place but the state government is adamant that no because the niti ayog has said so uh, these things you know and uh, another situation very uh, uh, kind of relevant for jharkhand and uh, like the law and order situation we all are aware uh, many of the districts in jharkhand are majorly maoist infested mcc and other uh, outfits are operating there now the uh, central government they have come up with a list uh, which excludes many districts including mine uh, that it is no more maoist infested and for that reason they have cut down around 200 crores of, of funds which were earlier dedicated for that particular district in the name of uh, special assistance in the name of backward regions development fund so all these steps are being taken purely because they have the majority so majority should be respected it you should it should not go to your head i mean it should not turn into arrogance that is what is happening with the central government now and i also feel that there has to be a judicious balance uh, or some mechanism has to be developed how to ensure that or else the center should certainly lose its hold on the states thank you interesting thought i'm going to come back to both of you on your ideas but let's hear from jayan first well we have priyanka from indian national congress a national party also taking the view that uh, states need need to be respected uh, the basic nature of our constitution the way uh, when our country was uh, given its independence the way our founding fathers sort of uh, thought the direction of a country should go in was that you should have a strong federal character strong uh, federal polity and uh, that regional voices should definitely have a say in in the direction the government of the of the nation but you know like uh, previous commentators have have spoken about the basic way in which politics is being conducted today in which government is putting its stamp on decisions in which a lot of these decisions taken by a very strong leader in a very strong government are thrust down the throat so a lot of people who perhaps are not uh, so or um, not uh, amenable to those decisions a uh, specific example was given by kunal right now thing is wohi doodh hai wohi shakkar hai aap kitne der doodh ko baloge kitna usko gaada karoge shakkar kab milaoge और उसके बाद उसका खोया बनाओगे उसका रसगुल्ला बनाओगे उसका चमचम बनाओगे उसकी खीर बनाओगे इतनी विविधता हमारे देश में है दैट इज द बेसिक स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ आर ऑफ आर नेशन वी आर वन नेशन इन डेमोक्रेसी यू हैव टू रूल बाय द मेजोरिटी बट रूल बाय मेजोरिटी डजेंट मीन दैट यू दैट यू स्टॉप लिसनिंग टू डिसेंट दैट यू स्टॉप गिविंग दोज वॉइस द फ्रीडम दैट दे रिस्पेक्ट सो राइट नाउ इन्वायरमेंट वी आर इन इट्स अ वेरी पोलराइज इन्वायरमेंट इट्स गोन बी अ बाय पोलर इलेक्शन फ्रॉम all accounts from all political commentaries on what's going to happen in 2019 it seems like you either for one person or you against one person you go into any government office today you sit down with an officer have tea with him and he'll say bhaiya ab to chai itni achhi bani hai kaise bani hai ji modi ji ke raat mein chai achhi milti hai kyunki pichli sarkaron mein hum do chamma chini dalte the aur aadhi chamma chini ka swad aata tha ab hum aadhi chamma chini dalte hain aur देखिए इतनी मीठी हो गई है तो दिस अ पर्सनैलिटी कल्ट दैट्स बीइंग डेवलप्ड एंड दिस इज अ बेसिक नेचर ऑफ आवर कंट्री एज वेल डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर स्पोक अबाउट दिस इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली ही ही डिड मेंशन ही स्पोक अबाउट भक्ति दैट इज अ नेचुरल टेंडेंसी फॉर पीपल इन आवर कंट्री विद आवर रिलीजियस सॉर्ट ऑफ माइंड सेट्स एंड एंड आवर ट्रेडिशंस दैट वी विल perhaps give too much extraordinary power or too much expectations on one person on one personality but that we should never fritter away our fundamental rights never sort of forget the powers that have been given to us by our constitution that those were his sort of words the main thrust of what he wanted to convey i am from a rs maji house growing up i was always told ke bhai mandir hai log wahan jaate hain lekin agar aap kisi shakti mein vishwas rakhte hain to charo taraf hai you don't need a a pratik you don't need a statue to bow down to those are the sort of belief and value systems that i grew up uh you know in that was the environment in my household so but there is on the other hand a natural tendency to people to say these government structures kahan state government kahan nagar panchayat kahan mp kahan mla kya parishad ka kaam hai kya pradhan ka kaam hai ye bahut abstract concept hai hame ek aadmi chahiye us aadmi ko hum puri taakat de dete hain aur wo sahi faisle lega us aadmi ke chunav mein hum badh chadkar hissa lete hain so there is a natural tendency to give a lot of power to one individual 
Therefore, people like us, when we are advocating for strong state, when we are advocating for regionalism, when we are advocate, advocating that every voice needs to be heard, we are actually swimming against the tide. Okay, let me, you've all made some very interesting points, but you've all come down on one side of the issue, that the states ought to be given more freedom, more authority. Um, let me play devil's advocate for a minute. The counter side of the argument is this. The bulk of the resources are with the central government. Uh, if the central government doesn't have a fair um, vision of the needs of the country as a whole, and just lets the states do their own thing, then two or three bad things could happen. The states that are already rich will become richer, and no one will help the states that are poor because they don't have the resources. Secondly, where there are inequitous practices, where states are presiding over systems in which there is discrimination against certain castes or certain tribes or whatever, there'll be no corrective measure because the central has too little influence over them. And third, with states having the freedom to run themselves the way they like, there will be no overarching vision of India or what's good for India or Indian laws, Indian approaches that will be maintained. So the counter argument is, yes, we need to decentralize some of the implementation of policies, but surely policies and laws and indeed financial resource allocations need to be made at the center. What do you say to that, Priyanka? While I'm in agreement with uh, some parts of the argument, but right now our jhagda is not that we should get autonomy. Right now our jhagda is that the amount of autonomy is that you give us. That is the main crux of the matter that we are fighting and arguing about uh, this. I think our leaders who fought for the independence movement then came up with a constitution. They were very clear in their minds what uh, when, when they started merging the states into this entire idea of the India that we were talking about, what we fought for. They had all this uh, envisioned that these could be challenges, these could be the problems that the states are, and these are the reasons why the states are merging with the uh, Union of India. And they had come up with very separate lists that this is what the state governments would handle, this is what the central center would handle. The problem begins when the center starts exercising its authority and overpowering authority on the various state governments. That is when the problem arises. So there are, maybe there have been changes over the 70 years, but as of now, what we are seeing is a situation where the autonomy promised to various states is also being destroyed one, one state at a time. That is when problems arise. In Uttar Pradesh, also this land reform uh, uh, that is being discussed, I believe, in your state too. Uh, there's a land ordinance which we fought against. We did not want that land ordinance to come without a social impact assessment. They wanted to do away with the social impact assessment, which would have a, a huge impact on the farmers and people who are giving away their lands for development. We fought for it and we defeated that ordinance, they had to withdraw it. But various states are now, wherever BJP is in government, have been slimily told to pass this ordinance, uh, pa pass this in their states, where they can do away with the social impact clause. So this is where you're damaging the authority and autonomy, because if another government, another political party comes into power in that particular state, they've already found a structure which is damaged. So what we're doing right now and what we're fighting for right now is ensuring that there's no further damage done and fighting against whatever damage that they are trying to create in various uh, states. Actually, in this states. example, the state is taking on too much power against the center. There is a central law that says you must have a social impact assessment. The state is violating that law, which the center was unable to uh, change. Absolutely, and the central tried amending it. The yeah. new government, the Modi-led government, they tried amending it. They could not do it because they didn't have the numbers. In Jharkhand, because they have the majority, they brought this in the assembly. Hum logo ne आपको सबको मैं कुछ हिंदी में भी बोलना चाहूँगा क्योंकि मेरी जो ऑडियंस है झारखंड में वो हिंदी भी ज़्यादा समझती है दो साल से झारखंड की विधानसभा इट हैज़ नॉट ऑपरेटेड दो साल से फॉर द लास्ट कपल ऑफ एक भी सेशन नहीं हुआ है नो क्वेश्चन आर हैज टेकन प्लेस इन द स्टेट असेंबली बजट कैसे पास हुए बजट तो ऐसे ही पास करते हैं मेजोरिटी है जैसे बाकी चीज़ें पास कर रहे हैं यू विल बी सरप्राइज टू नो यू विल बी सरप्राइज टू नो जिस सी एन सीएनटी एसपीटी का जो अमेंडमेंट है जो झारखंड के सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट टेनेंसी लॉज हैं जो झारखंड के लिए ही बनाए गए हैं अंग्रेजों के समय से उसको किसी ने नहीं बदला इन लोगों ने फर्स्ट टाइम मेजॉरिटी में आने के बाद उसको बदला जब हम लोगों ने विधानसभा में इसका विरोध किया तीन हमारे विधायक हमारी पार्टी के विधायक सस्पेंड हुए हैं इसको विरोध करने में विधानसभा नहीं चली लेकिन राज्यपाल ने फाइनली उसको वापस कराया तो सरकार पास नहीं करवा पाई लेकिन सिर्फ मेजोरिटी जस्ट बिकॉज वी हैव द मेजोरिटी वी आर एडमेंट वी विल पास इट थ्रू द असेंबली मार्शल से मंत्री को घेरा गया ये गुजरात का मॉडल है मार्शल से मंत्री को घेरा गया एज इफ कि देर आर 81 क्रिमिनल सिटिंग देर नॉट एम एल एज 
منتری کو بچایا جا رہا ہے مارسلس گھیرے ہوئے ہیں ہم لوگوں کے لوگ کرسیاں ٹوٹی اس کے بعد بھی کچھ نہیں جب راج پال مہودیا نے اس کو واپس کیا تو سرکار نے مانا کہ ہم سے گلتی ہوئی تھی ان کے اپنے پارٹیز کے ایم ایل ایز چٹھی لکھ رہے ہیں کہ نہیں ہم سے گلتی ہوئی تھی ابھی جو پریانکا جی نے ذکر کیا جس ٹوینٹی تھرٹین سوشل امپیکٹ اسسمنٹ کا جو جھارکھنڈ کے کانٹیکس میں اتنا امپورٹنٹ ہے وستھاپن جھارکھنڈ کی سب سے بڑی سمسیا ہے اس کا بنا نراکرن کیے یہ لوگ آج پھر سے بیک ڈور سے جب سی این ٹی ایس پی ٹی دے کوڈ ناٹ امینڈ سو دے ہیو براڈ دس ٹوینٹی تھرٹین لینڈ اکوزیشن بل کا امینڈمنٹ بائی گیٹنگ ریڈ آف سوشل امپیکٹ اسسمنٹ سو پرٹیکولرلی فار جھارکھنڈ یو سی جھارکھنڈ پروڈیوس دا میکسیمم کول فار دس کنٹری اینڈ واٹ وی گیٹ ان دا ریل وے بجٹ just because it is with the center whatever they want to decide they decide for us so idly in some areas where the state are contributing majorly they should certainly get a say in that how much budget should be allocated for that department in that particular state interesting thought jen we actually had two different things because colonel went on to a second one we'll go back to the first one where there is a central law here we have an example where the state has essentially violated the provisions of that law which says that you can't take over land without a social impact assessment. And it has said, no, we'll dispense with a social impact assessment and we'll go ahead and actually uh, uh, do our own thing. Now, that suggests that it's not a question of the center having a hold on the states. It's a question of the states bypassing the center. But maybe because it's the BJP, like it's, with their, it's yes, with their both parties, connivance. Exactly. It's connivance. See, also, land laws do come under the domain of the state. And it's uh, at the central level, First, Modi ji set up this stumbling block for his own government when he announced that this will be the big, big bang reform we're going to go with. I remember Jaitley ji went to London and he met investors there and from there he said that this is going to be the first big legislative step we're going to take, that we're going to amend the Land Acquisition Act. Then all of these parties, all of us started saying that what, where is the hurry, where is the experience, why are you changing a law that was passed from you know, 1894 to 2013 was a long journey that people had to undertake to change the law. So then they took a step backwards. But they did, they, 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 they put up this, set up this loophole for states to use these, uh, yes. for, for states to come up and use the loophole. And they left it to the states to then decide whether social impact assessment is required. The states will now decide how much acquisition, uh, when your land is being acquired, how much compensation is to be rewarded two times, four times. Uh, and we see in Uttar Pradesh, you know, there's an example right now, there's this talk of a new project. Uh, everyone wants the airport to be made. Of course, the people, entire villages are going to have to be... Uh, the Noida airport. The, the Jaiwar airport. Entire villages are going to have to go. So they are saying that, you know, overnight, we are living in a village, we don't have any urban amenities. Overnight, the district administration said, you are actually in an urban area. And in an urban area, you're going to get two times uh, the ceiling, you're not going to get four times the ceiling. So there are, there are many ways in which the state can actually, uh, I mean the government can actually impose its view. Actually in, in the scheme of things, in the way our constitution is set up, in the way governments have been run, uh, the center has always been envisaged as being stronger. We have so many institutions that also uh, strengthen the center. You have one IAS, right, the one administrative service, you have an integrated judiciary, then you have institutions that are meant to protect and preserve the states, but they have been defunct, they have been disabled, uh, they have not been strengthened in, in, the, in the manner that they should have been. For example, the Interstate Council, That's, and now it's been uh, reduced to a meet where chief ministers come, prime minister gives a half an hour, one hour long bhashan and everyone goes back. I don't know what's happened to the NDC, whether that even exists anymore. You have a governing council of a Niti Aayog, which Pradhan Mantri said is going to make short term, medium term, long term plans. And initially, I mean, earlier the planning commission used to report to NDC. Now there is no such structure. Okay. And in about three years, this Niti Ayogya has been unable to come up with short-term, medium-term, long-term plan. They, they, were, they tried to do this three-year action plan and they weren't able to push that through. So the institutions that were meant for states to come and, and, and tell the center that this is, you know, where we, you, you may be slipping up. The, the institutions that were meant to resolve conflicts between center and state, interstate conflicts, today are lying weakened. So therefore, that's, that's why we're saying states do need to be strengthened. That's a very important point. In fact, briefly to mention Kunal's point about the Niti Aayog. It's interesting, Niti Aayog is not a decision-making body. It's an advisory that's body right, called itself a think tank. But for all practical purposes, Niti Aayog is taking the decisions and instructing, rather, the state governments because to it's implement aligned it. to the PMO. Exactly. So. <laughs> but in fact, they can't constitutionally And the premise that they gave for school merger in Jharkhand, chhatron ki sankhya kam ho rahi hai. 
तो अगर आप शिक्षक नहीं देंगे विद्यालयों में तो छात्रों की संख्या कम होगी अस्पतालों में डॉक्टर्स नहीं देंगे तो अस्पतालों में मरीजों की संख्या कम होगी तो सरदर्द की दवा देने की जगह आप सर काट रहे हैं and they're drafting they're drafting bills earlier you know you have a ministry the ministry department is going to do the drafting now niti aayog is drafting the bill and is pushing to government ki aap ye bill pass kijiye exactly medical State council bill. aspirational districts they have come up with a list of some 100 odd districts aspirational aur wahan pe bhi schools band ho rahe kaun sa aspiration hai ye jo schools band ho rahe must be the only the aspiration of those kids who don't like to go to school precisely all of them again acha but seriously coming back to uh, to the, there is a larger issue which came up recently during the um, terms of reference of the finance commission yes uh, which uh, asked the finance commission 15th finance commission to take into account the population according to the census, census. of 2011 now there's nothing wrong with that logically and common sense wise except that way back in the 70s a deal had been struck that in order not to reward the states that were failing to improve their human development indicators empower their women and control their population that most of these allocations including the distribution of lok sabha seats would be frozen at the 71 census now what has suddenly happened is uh those states i'm afraid we've got three north indian sitting here so <laughs> i am in a bit of a minority those states which precisely have grown much more faster in population are technically eligible for more assistance and some of the southern states are getting a bit aroused about this jayant is right they no longer have a forum to thrash out these issues so they've all written uh, mr sidharamaya wrote an op-ed uh mr pawan kalyan and andhra wrote an op-ed various people raised the issue why are we subsidizing the non performing states with our revenues but this raises a larger question which is what is the center all about i mean if we are one country shouldn't the richer states in any case reward the poorer ones so it gets into a serious question when we talk about states rights and states autonomy then should we be giving uh, a richer state like let's say karnataka the right to keep more of its money for itself rather than send it to jharkhand it's a tough one but you have to answer it priyanka <laughs> um you know uh, this is the first time where i felt that so many debates and discussions have happened on the north and south divide whether it is the kerala floods whether it is the 15 planning commission we are talking about the finance financial allocation etc we never saw that happening earlier and that is when the question arises why are we seeing such kind of polarization within the states maybe we need to have like he was talking about these interstate councils we need to strengthen those till we don't strengthen those we don't understand the responsibilities which perhaps the richer states have towards those who are not performing uh, as well or perhaps they have the population challenge which is ending up giving them more funds at this point in time is something that would have come out of discussions deliberations meetings and Uh, you know reaching to some kind of resolutions we don't see that happening at all and also center has been playing big brother and has been trying to decide where finance will be allocated more and there have been times where finances or financial packages or the train routes have been decided on the basis of which parties in power in the state and the center there has been a trend like that so that has damaged the core federal structure that we've been talking about and that is the only way uh, through partnerships through uh, you know uttar pradesh getting into a partnership with karnataka where karnataka can share its expertise with uttar pradesh and we should have i would hope to see one day where the north and south collaborate in whatever way they can and discuss and engage for betterment of all and that is what the idea of india should be we can have our differences we can be living in a different way we can be talking different languages but we are united with, because of one idea and that idea is of development for all so that is where we are seeing this disparity and divisiveness that is coming in the minds of the people Can also I? you know institutions have been there since time immemorial uh, institutions have been there institutions are working for the first time in this dispensation it is happening everything is being rebranded you know pehli baar ho raha hai like jain said sab kuch pehli baar kuch din mein ye bhi ye keh sakte hain ki taj mahal abhi bana hai pehle nahi tha because why i am saying tejo mahal tejo mahal hai tejo mahal hai, tejo tejo mahal hai. hai. उसको ताजमहल रख दिया हाँ ये जो महल था उसको ताजमहल रख दिया तो ये जो चीजें हैं नॉर्थ इंडिया नॉर्थ नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स की अलग काउंसिल बनाई जा रही है पहले से भी उनके लिए स्पेशल लॉज बने हुए हैं तो ये रीब्रांडिंग ज्यादा हो रही है मॉनिटरिंग कम हो रही है जहाँ की मॉनिटरिंग ज्यादा होनी चाहिए कि कैसे जो ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन है वो बेहतर काम करें 
ना कि हर दिन नए इंस्टीट्यूशन हम बना रहे हैं और उनकी मॉनिटरिंग का कोई मतलब नहीं रह रहा है तो इस पर आई गेस द फोकस शुड बी मोर ऑन यू नो मॉनिटरिंग दीज इंस्टीट्यूशन हाउ आर दे इंप्लीमेंटिंग द स्ट्रैटेजीज विज आर ऑलरेडी इन प्लेस rather than coming up with a new strategy and confusing the entire administrative setup the government everything that is what is happening jens well i'm 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 going to tackle this question at a philosophical level all right <laughs> <laughs> see basically politics is always going to be about identity and the question of the notion of identity is always complex you have this whole debate raging now in assam with nrc other states are going to come up and say hum bhi karana chahte hain you have you know mumbai this Manipur politics manipur has just done so yes you have politics in mumbai saying ye bahar walon ko nikalo uttar bharat mumbai jo hai maratha taxi driver ko maro even in my constituency mathura you know in noida now there is some agitation people were saying bhai noida walon ko hi naukri milni chahiye ye samsung factory mein bahar ke log kaise aa rahe hain so identity is always complex in in politics we always going to use identity because that's the only way we can tell the voters that we are with you we understand you we understand your problems and we are there to solve them so that that's going to that's always going to stay there the question is how do we resolve those issues those conflicts and uh, you know again philosophically people like their own identity people like where they started out from so for example kisi ne pradhani ka chunav jeet gaya wo uske baad mukhyamantri bhi banayega usko aadmi kahenge pradhan ji you know just yesterday i was sitting with people who were saying that gone to delhi there was a residence of a ex retired dsp dsp rank to ghar ke bahar plaque mein uska naam likha hai likha hai retired dsp bad akshar mein likha hai daroga ji to aadmi pasand karta hai we relate to you know that's how people related to that person perhaps the pradhan was the first first position of importance to the people that direct connection always matters that is the first identity that we always will use to understand society where we are what we stand for what is our significance so that's going to remain you can't wipe that out question is are governments able to resolve those conflicts are we putting adding more fuel to the fire does when the prime minister before bihar elections if he goes and says we kitne lene hain 80000 90000 1 lakh 25000 crore hum de dete hain is that not adding fuel to the fire is that not letting people believe that we don't need these systems we don't need federal structure we only need this one strong prime minister so that's the question are we are we uh, you know adding fat to the fire so that these conflicts keep raging on or are we actually looking at ways in which we can strengthen our motherland well this is a real uh, i mean it's an important philosophical question you talk about local identities i mean after all is there not an indian identity that subsumes everything if you say now that you know jobs in up should only be for up up folks and what is worse the jobs in noida should only be for noida folks <laughs> then uh, you are really essentially saying that local identity trumps all now i happen to come from the state of kerala for the people to vote on it right but in kerala we have a million migrant workers from bengal and orissa and assam who have come yeah. and are doing construction jobs in manual labor but also handymen buildings and electricians and plumbers uh, that we otherwise have a shortage of so it's partially a function of economics it's possible that suddenly if we had a super abundance of kerala is doing this work they would also turn anti migrant but right now they don't have enough people so they're happy to welcome the migrants maybe it's one of economics that maybe those who are saying maharashtra for maharashtrians and those who are saying noida for noida we need someone to blame no uh, if we could yeah, create we could jobs, jobs yeah. then we would probably not have an issue with no career ho gaya lega hai creating no career in create ho rahi hai to sab apni identity ka istemal kar kar they will put that at the forefront of the entire discussion so that is what the liking the identity is fine but it should not become your priority आपने कहा पंद्रह लाख देंगे कोई पूछता है कहाँ गए पंद्रह लाख तो हम मूर्ति बना रहे हैं शिवाजी की पटेल की मूर्ति बना रहे हैं के और राम के शुड नॉट बिकम द प्राइम इन द मेन फोकस ऑफ योर स्ट्रैटेजीज की आइडेंटिटी ही है झारखंड में जाएंगे तो ठीक है बिरसा मुंडा इंपॉर्टेंट है हम लोगों के लिए लेकिन बिरसा मुंडा की मूर्ति से ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है कि सही समय पर जो सेंट्रल का असिस्टेंस आता है वो मैचिंग फंड आता है पेंशन के लिए वो लोगों के अकाउंट में पहुंचे वो दैट इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन देन बिरसा की मुंडी बनी कि नहीं उस पर कितने करोड़ खर्च हो रहे हैं केरला के लिए आप 500 करोड़ देते हैं और मूर्तियां बनाने के लिए आप 4000 करोड़ खर्च कर रहे हैं तो आइडेंटिटी अच्छी है सबके मुझे भी अच्छी लगती है आई लाइक बिंग आइडेंटिफाइड बहुत अच्छा लगता है लोग पहचानते हैं लेकिन वो आपकी प्रायोरिटी नहीं बननी चाहिए बिल्कुल ना दिस स्लाइड साइड ट्रैकिंग टू अनदर इशू दैट्स कम अप इन्वॉल्विंग सेंटर एंड स्टेट्स द गवर्नमेंट हैज फ्लोटेड दिस आइडिया ऑफ सैमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस 
oh, yeah. in the center of the state. The prime minister has said it. The Rashtrapati ji said it in one of his state, uh, one of his speeches. Uh, the law commission has been asked to advise on it, and they have come out in favor. Um, now you've all been arguing that you want more autonomous states, or at least autonomous states, if not more so, uh, and, and less powerful center. What do you feel about this idea? Jayant, I'm going to reverse the order and start right. with you this time. <laughs> See, I have practical problems with this. Uh, I'm not even going to whether our voters are mature enough or not. Can they vote separately for state election and central election that are happening at the same time? Perhaps they want to vote for a regional party for the state, for a national party for the center. But are they able to discern that this button is for this button? Is for I'm not even going into that. You know, that's also an issue, but I'm not, I'm not touching that. My main issue is that the, the purported benefits of this exercise, they, there's not enough debate on actually looking at what are the savings. You know, because you you're saying you're saving a lot of money, but actual fact of the matter is our election commission is anyway stretched. They don't have an independent machinery. They're completely reliant on state machinery. You have masters who are given duties and they're sitting in the polling booths. Your entire security app apparatus is going to be there Manning, so many areas in our country are still sensitive. We have sensitive polling booths. You have rigging practices. You have naxalism. You have, uh, from a security point of view, areas where you need more deployment. So if you're going to have elections in one go, I'm not sure it's going to be cheaper. We don't have enough EVMs right now. We've had an experience recently in Kerala where one parliamentary election, we had the experience of 350 polling booths where the machines were going wrong in one parliament election. So if 20-25% of your machines are, are not working in one parliamentary election, you know, it, it raises serious doubts on our capability to conduct elections simultaneously across the country. And then secondly, suppose the state government doesn't last five years. What are you going to do then? This entire exercising, spending so much money, harmonizing things, coordinating things, doing that one Absolutely. election and then say Jharkhand doesn't last, what are you going to do? You're going to have president's rule for Correct. three years? Exactly. Does it make sense? Also, okay, yeah. also mm -hmm. in their election manifesto, did they ever mention about one nation, one election? Never. Like many other things, they, they had not mentioned, but they are implementing now. The problem is not with how much budget is required to conduct the elections at one go. The problem is, even for a panchayat election, they require the brand Modi. That's the reason they want to conduct all the elections. In Jharkhand, for a bipole, for a bipole, if the prime minister has the time to go there, and distribute free pensions and, and a Dakia scheme, which is apparently for primitive tribes, to deliver the ration at their place. So you can very well understand what they are actually banking on. So it's not about whether they want to save money. Had they really been having the intention to save money, they could have saved it on the various projects that are lying, un I mean, still pending for so many years, like the Swandarika project, which idly would have served thousands of acres of land in Jharkhand. Priyanka. You know, I will, I mean, they have explained that brilliantly. I just have to say one thing. He's mentioned the election manifesto. After coming to power and being voted into power, they said election, all the election promises were just jumlas to get vote. Now, all they're doing is hamla on the democracy and every known norm and structures of the democracy that has strengthened uh, the, the country in its nation building process. So, jumla se hamla is what we are arguing right now. <laughs> That may be the right note in which to open it up to the audience. Um, do you have questions? Yes. Uh, is there a mic going around the audience, by the way? Or will this young gentleman have to really shout? There is a mic coming. Let's check their vocal cords. And are they fit for the parliament? <laughs> <laughs> then they'll come to the well. Don't, don't <laughs> I love the same one. Shant Rahi, Shant do we have a speaker here? Who is, who is, who is going to do that? Who is going to do that? <laughs> Shant do we have a speaker in the house? <laughs> Ha, ah, hello. Go ahead. That gentleman uh, standing there at the back had asked for the mic. Yeah. Are you, are you a questioner or a volunteer? You have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hold it a little closer to you and speak. Yes. Tell us who uh, you are, which state you're from, whatever. Sir, so I have a question. Uh, when FCRA Act was amended in 2016, the Congress has What's supported that? Congress has supported BJP and, uh, and the uh, foreign contribution for the political parties was allowed. And while the, uh, the rights, uh, the, the NGOs who works in human rights and environment, like Amnesty and Greenpeace, 
we are not allowed uh, in those FCRA Act. So do you think uh, the RTI at least should be extended to the political parties? And uh, how uh, can you light on, on this? OK, who wants to tackle that? I, I think it was a very bad decision to allow foreign contributions under the FCRA Act to political parties. I think it's wrong. I think no foreigners should be um, influencing our elections through money. And I think it was an absolutely wrong law. But you're right, it had the support of both the big parties. I just think it was a wrong decision, but that's but, my uh, personal just, view. Just want, want to understand, wasn't the finance bill passed in 12 minutes and no questions taken or questions allowed? That's true, but... but so th and FCRA was passed in that particular amendments. Uh, so I think that was the first impact that uh, while we totally disagree that uh, FCRA... Sh of course, no foreign uh, companies should be contributing to political parties in India. And FCRA was a bill that we introduced when we were in power. So this entire amendments that have happened have happened in such a sly manner where within 12 minutes all the financial amendments that needed to be made and the finance bill get cleared without even hearing the opposition has happened and that is what is the uh, stark reality right now and this is what we are fighting against and this is what we are talking about and I, I didn't get your other question he said something about, said something about RTI, RTI. 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 absolutely I think the Congress has agreed on in principle when uh, the law commission had asked and the, even the, the election commission had ha asked us about this we had agreed that if all parties are in agreement about bringing uh, uh, political parties into the RTI we are absolutely all right with it but we already have many checks and balances in place how about implementing those uh, first and then we can look at the RTI option but we are open to the idea. It's about other parties which need to make their stance clear, especially the Bharatiya Janta Party, which made this a big issue, but and ended up really not doing anything about it. And if I'm not mistaken, they have opposed it. They've, no, they've opposed it, and the Election Commission held a meeting recently where they spoke about capping the election spend. I was, a part, was, only, I was oh, a part of that meeting. I was a part of that meeting. So now yes, you can yes, uh, yes, yeah, yes, of talk about it for they, sure. They, the BJP was the only party which actually objected to this idea. There they should not be any cap for the party funding. What they uh, uh, rather tried... Election funding. Yes, huh. election funding. And like, uh, uh, it will depend on the number of seats you are contesting. So you just multiply the number of seats you are contesting with each individual candidate is allowed to expend. So that much expenditure should be for the party. Which is, uh, if, if it gets implemented, it is really not helpful for the smaller parties because they don't contest on those many seats. So like uh, uh, the Prime Minister's fact, degree... On that particular issue, I can tell you from bitter experience, that this is the way in which a party like the BJP, any well-funded party, exactly. can bypass the cap on individual candidate expenditures. Absolutely. By more than adequately compensating, compensating. for whatever the individual yes. candidate is yes. spending mm -hmm. in the name of parties. But their party's fund. Anyway, Jayant, you are the one who hasn't said anything about this. I think it's, <laughs> it's been a You're in favor of RTI? You're in favor of... We uh, are. But see, right now, I think parties already submit their accounts. So there is already a lot of information that is being submitted to the authorities. We don't want a situation where uh, information is sought just for the frivolous purposes where they say, Achha, ye aapne kaise kari thi, aur isko mein ticket kaise de diya, aur mujhe nahi diya. So th there are uh, points of view on both sides, but for tra transparency, I think all parties have already come, apart from a few, have come to an understanding that RTI to a certain limits can be allowed. Uh, in <laughs> Otherwise, okay. both will have RTI departments oppo opposing parties. <laughs> uh, <laughs> question here. I'm trying to look for a bit of gender balance. Yes, the lady there, I think, just behind you. There's a lady behind or not? Did I, did I see wrong? No, only three bearded guys. All right. <gasps> uh, then the oh, my God. <laughs> Isn't that a... Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. There was a lady behind you, but I saw your hand. This is why I need glasses for distance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I think the gentleman was already standing here in the black shirt and then the red cap and then Samaj we'll come Vardy. to a totally different side. Come uh, to the side after that. Good yeah. afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Sir. Uh, I am Nikhil Katri and I'm a medical student. Sorry, sir, can you hold the mic a little closer? Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, I am Nikhil Katri and I'm a medical student and I'm from Delhi. Sir, what are the points you which, which you would mention for the youngster who want to enter the politics that, have, that don't have a political background? <laughs> well, can, you, can you repeat the I, question? How do you enter politics you enter if you politics? don't have a political background? I can doubt. give you my own example. I, I joined the Youth Congress and that was when Youth Congress was actively inviting people who are from non-political families, absolutely uh, uh, coming from non-political backgrounds and want to be a part of the nation building process with an ideology that matches their uh, you know, principles. 
and they could join at that point in time. So I joined the Congress party as a youth Congress member and from the youth Congress, I have gone on to become what I am doing currently. So this is how you enter politics. These are the systems and uh, uh, places through which you can contribute in a political setup. So uh, I would say this is one example. And if you are interested, you should look for the closest youth, co youth Congress, youth <laughs> BJP or whatever. So join we... Congress. That's oh, the yeah, message. absolutely. <laughs> Congress is willing. Congress is open. Join Congress. But I mean, yeah. her point is that you don't have to be from a political, you do have to be from a political family if you want to get a ticket right off the bat. But if you want to work your way up to it, there are lots of options through the youth organizations of your parties. And so I, and I, I correct parties. that. You yeah. know, I come from a political Same background here. in that sense. So, so I, perhaps I shouldn't be the one saying this. But the mi principal barriers to entry for anyone who's outside this political system to come in are perhaps not erected by the political parties as much as by the voting public. The basic impediment for you to elect, fight elections is the amount of money you require. Okay? Absolutely. And let's be, you know, let's completely be very frank honest and honest about, about it. it. Yeah, very honest about Forget it. election commission limits. Hmm. What happens in elections, I think as voters, you perhaps have also experienced the same. So as until the voting public decides that, okay, I'm going to actually look at the educational backgrounds. I'm going to look at the social contribution of this individual. I'm going to look at the individual as, 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 as also as, you know, what platform does he come from? What is the manifesto of the party? Uh, what is the uh, consistency of the leadership? And then I'm going to vote. Until the voting public doesn't come around to that point of view, Absolutely. I think we're going to come up with these questions. And also, you know, it, it also depends on the political parties. They should also be coming up with something like they do, uh, like the companies, the corporates, they go and do campus placements. So ideally, the political parties should also be, you know, political placements. Yeah. Political <laughs> placements. And there should be an, there should be an, there should be an Indian Institute of Politics, like the way we have <laughs> IMs and IITs. <laughs> Teaching yeah, <laughs> so only then, only then you can get the talent, get the talent there, or else what is that? But also, also, when you mention about family lineage, if you have a family uh, to support you, fine, you want to enter politics, you have a family background. It can also go the other way, like it has gone for some, uh, some of the people who are sons of very famous film stars and cricketers. So if you don't perform, uh, the fall will also be very steep. Yeah. If the rise is going to be very easy, the fall is also be very steep if you don't perform. Very so that, that po uh, aspect is also there. Okay, I got lots of hands. It will be impossible to reach you all. Um, all right, let's see on this side for a change. Um, <laughs> there's a guy standing right there already. That's his eagerness is there. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gentleman, he all was the first one to stand, that's all. Yeah, okay. No ladies yet. Come on. Ah, okay. There's a young lady here for next one. Okay, go ahead. Hello, sir. I'm Dharmen Singh and I belong to the constituency of Jain Chaudhary Ji, Mathura, sir. And I do really agree with the change and the discussion which you are holding up that the center should lose the power or the control. But the issue is that, ki hoga kaise? I would like to remind a situation that in 2004, uh, 2008, Mr. Barack Obama, was having an opposing leader, Mr. John McKay. He was well-qualified, well-deserving candidate in America, but because the persona of Obama was so much used that he got selected on the basis of hyperboles and promises were made which were next to achieve, which were impossible to achieve. And same thing happened in 2014 in India. After that, in 2012, in America again, Mitt Romney was there and because of the comparatively least popular famous figure as compared to the Barack Obama, even after the inspired failures of his government, govern, uh, sorry, government, he got elected again. So my question is to you because sir, ek ke sardar, matlab, या फिर वो सिस्टम डेवलप हो जिससे कि वो चेंज आए अदरवाइज हम 2024 से पहले कहीं ऐसी किसी डिस्कशन को ना कर रहे हो तो उसके लिए मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है प्लीज 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 तो उसके लिए मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि व्हेन द ब्रांड मोदी इज मच पावरफुल एज ऑफ नाउ देन द ब्रांड रागा और राहुल गांधी जी जैन चौधरी yeah, Jain Chaudhary is also there because at this moment of time they have only one issue that if you want to have a hold in Western UP, then you should have a hold on Jain Chaudhary ji. So his journey is also go, is going to be a lot of, you know, difficult. 
इसने तो पकड़ लिया मुझे हाँ राइट सो नाउ देर इज वन इश्यू अबाउट द ब्रांड पॉलिटिक्स कटिंग इट लूज सो देन अनदर इश्यू इज दैट द इलेक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी प्रेसिडेंशियल अगेन मैन आई हम इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्किंग अगेन एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट विद दे आर हैविंग ट्रैड एंड टेस्टेड इलेक्ट्रॉनिकल मशीन्स मशीनरी विच हैज बीन सक्सेसफुली इंप्लीमेंटेड इन मोर देन ट्वेंटी स्टेट्स अगेन द इश्यू इज दैट द अपोजिशन इज वीक इन द डिफेंस एंड द अटैक इज ऑल्सो नॉट सो मच पावरफुल विच इज रिक्वायर्ड एट द मूमेंट हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू मेक श्योर दैट द चेंज इज गोइंग टू हैपन how you are going to make sure that a different and a better government is going to be in power Before so okay, listen that's, that's 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 a vast question i'm I'll sure all my panelists will have Jen, answers yeah. let Mr. me Nick, make one Nick basic Nick. point first and then i'll give it to them to go into the details we don't have a presidential system in india uh, and the fact is that in the american system you genuinely vote for an individual and when that individual wins he may not even necessarily be the favorite of his party but once he wins the nomination becomes a candidate he then becomes a party nominee and if he becomes the president i say he because so far nobody but he has been president uh, that person then gets to decide the administration in our system it's completely different it's a parliamentary system the actually the only people who get to vote from narendra modi are the voters of varanasi or if he runs from somewhere else that other place strictly speaking you are voting for your mp who will represent you and your interests in parliament that mp will belong to a particular party now you may feel that whoever the candidate is you want to vote for the mp who will put mr modi as prime minister that's your privilege if you want to do that but that is not strictly speaking what you are being asked to do by the by the uh, election system very often local realities state realities the personality of your local candidate the performance of the incumbent all these factors come in when you make a decision as to which mp to vote for or which candidate to vote for for mp and the sum total of those results give you a composition of parliament which in turn determines a prime minister yeah, so you said man he ham hasn't worked it didn't work in 2014 because there was a very very effective and slick marketing job which i must It's admit we all have on. to take our hats off to it worked for mr modi but i would argue that in 2019 we've seen the limitations of that one man rule you know we are now offering and looking at two really di distinct styles of leadership one saying i'm the hero on the white stallion who's cantering down with upraised sword i know all the answers to all your problems and i'm going to cut through all the gordian knots but we've tried that for 5 years and achhe din has somehow not come and then you've got another leader who says look i don't know all the answers i maybe i don't even know all the questions but i will work with you you tell me what's on your mind what your issues are i will give you a sympathetic hearing and i will come back with a deep bench of experienced qualified able people from across the country to work with you and solve your problems now these are two different styles of leadership i agree with what jan said earlier that some people seem to only want one strong leader uh, maybe they think we should have a presidential system the problem of that the way it's worked in the last 4 years is we've had the worst of both worlds we've had a prime ministerial parliamentary system operating presidentially where one person he makes all the decisions but unlike in a genuine presidential system where there's an independent legislature to question him in the parliamentary system the prime minister has an automatic majority in parliament so he gets through anything he wants so we've actually had the worst features of presidentialism and the worst features of parliamentarism combined in one person for the last 4 years so i'm urging you all not to think that way think of the individual mp candidates and think of the set of choices facing you and then let's see what government should come but jan he answered it well one sent no no to add to this brilliant uh, absolutely yeah. okay i think there's only one point that sure. you, you touched upon it that we work in a parliamentary system with very strong presidential character of elections and the way government has been run we need to actually empower our mps uh, enough that they are able to be independent voices within their parties and within the parliamentary forums to stand up for what their constituency demands of them so you know not every vote for an mp should be considered uh, you know uh, uh, sacrilege if if he bypasses the party position not every vote in parliament uh, should we see whips being issued and there have been enough mps i know your Thank own you. position in this uh, issue that who petitioned uh, the house the speaker of the house to in institute these changes and we we need to work uh, more actively on that front and even within political parties to get this sense that you need to give that freedom of expression to your own mp so that 
tomorrow in the next election, people look at their MP first and, and also their party. Right now, they're only looking at that. Uh, well, this is not a question that Modi ji is standing in front of Modi ji. This is not a question that two people are singing. Actually, I've written an essay on this very subject because the whole philosophy of political representation articulated most famously by Burke in 1776 in a speech he made to the electors of Bristol. He said, you're voting for me. Right. Once I have won the election, you are paying me to exercise my judgment. If I go and sit in parliament and just do what you tell me to do, what the party tells me to do, then why me? It's my education, my ideas, my values, my judgment that you are paying to get. And if you don't like how I vote and what positions I take, kick me out after five years. That idea we don't have in India because we have a whip system where unfortunately the MP has to vote as the party tells him to vote. Anyway, we've got to take more questions. Young lady right here. Then I, I need some gender balance. We'll come to you that <laughs> evening now. Come. Hi, um, so most of you are members of the opposition, or at least not a part of the ruling party, even though you have um, certain amounts of power. So in that light, you have a platform to criticize and protest certain things that are happening in various parts of the country. So I wanted to ask, do you think that um, from, say, from the perspective of the Congress or other parties, do you think that it's important to, I'm giving one example here, to talk about uh, the atrocities that are happening against the Adivasis in Chhattisgarh? And do you think it's in your interest to do so? And if so, what would you do? So for example, there are the Adivasis in Chhattisgarh are subject to a lot of police brutality, brutality by the army. They're being raped, plundered, their houses destroyed, and tortured pretty much every day, and they're being branded as Mayoists and killed in fake encounters. Now, we're talking about democracy here. So how is it democracy when indigenous people the, whose land was originally theirs, their land is being snatched away, and they're being subjected to this kind of torture? So do you think that it's important to sort of talk about these issues? Because you would know about them, I'm sure, but we and don't Kural talk is from about next them. door, he's from Jharkhand. Let I'm me yeah. ask him to respond. I am from Jharkhand, so I find this issue more relevant. See, what idly we all believe, Naxalism or Maoism, whatever you call it, we all feel that... Urban Naxalism. Urban Naxalism is the new That's one. That's what I'm saying. That's Anyone the hashtag. up for them is now urban so Naxalism. it's no more limited to uh, Chhattisgarh. It's in Delhi and Bombay yeah, as yes, well yes, now. Yes, yes. So what, uh, what I believe, because I uh, represent a constituency in Jharkhand, which is majorly... Uh, Maoist infested, Naxalite infested. People have been oversimplifying this subject by saying that it happens because there is no development. Trust me, only 20% of it is related to development. 80% of it is ignorance of the subject. States, as well as the center, they feel it's a law and order situation. It is just not law and order situation. It's much more than that. You need to engage with them. You need to understand what is the development model that those Adivasis want, not what you feel is right for them. What yeah. idly has been happening, what idly has been happening in this country, because I'm from Jharkhand and our party also represent uh, the issues related to tribals in the most vocal way. We feel we should allocate them the fund. Fund is fine, but we should let them decide what is the development model that they want. Like yes. uh, in case of, yes, please. No, can I continue though? Have a little bit more to add to the question. Yeah. So you're talking about development, but I'm also saying that before we even get to development, which is, I mean, in a lot of pa districts of South Chhattisgarh, it's just not in question because the, you have to travel age, like a lo long distance to get water, and on the way you might be kidnapped and raped. I'm sorry, but um, those are some of the realities, but that's not the commonplace reality. So we've heard about cases like Sony Sori, and we've heard about how you know generals get awarded and given medals who have openly you know kidnapped you know a large number of women and raped them. So I'm I appreciate the work that you're doing, but I'm asking at a larger scale since we're talking about the center. Do you think now it's time to sort of bring this to the forefront and ask what can be done and you know even do something about it since you do have the power and I know that's a lot to take upon because the BJP government is a huge entity with a lot of support right now. Yeah. But it's not just them, right? It's, an, it's a structural problem. You'll have problem. to be a bit briefer now, huh? Okay, so it's a structural problem that, um, you know, it's because it's not even that there's AFSPA, which I'm not even going to get into. 
So how do you think that you can tackle this? I just want to know, to you know, sort of okay. understand this. Okay, you know, finish your answer. And yeah, then I'll, I'll just give you a very small example. Uh, apart from law and order also, the social, uh, you know, justice that ideally should be there for the Adivasis is not happening because we are again doing in the same way. हम लोगों ने एक छोटा सा एग्जाम्पल भी दिया था एक बार विधानसभा में मैंने इस बात को रखा था कि जो थाने होते हैं उन क्षेत्रों में जहां आदिवासी पॉपुलेशन इज इन मेजोरिटी वहां पर जो पुलिस इंचार्ज हो कम से कम उस स्टाफ में से कुछ स्टाफ आदिवासी समुदाय से हो ताकि वो उनकी धार्मिक भावनाएं उनकी जो रिलीजियस फीलिंग्स है उनके जो बैकग्राउंड उनको समझने वाले हों वी ऑलवेज टेंड टू बी एक्सट्रीमली जर्नलिस्टिक अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम दैट दे हैव इसको इसके अलावा अगर हम लोग इंगेजमेंट बढ़ाएं हर लेवल पे इंगेजमेंट बढ़ाएं उनके साथ वी नीड टू स्पेंड मोर टाइम विद दोज पीपल द गवर्नमेंट पीपल द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव पीपल एवरीबॉडी द एन जी ओज दैट आर वर्किंग इंस्टेड ऑफ सिटिंग इन डेली एंड यू नो फॉर्मिंग पॉलिसीज फॉर देम वी शुड बी गोइंग देयर स्पेंडिंग डेज विद देम अंडरस्टैंडिंग देयर बैकग्राउंड देयर सिचुएशन बोथ पोलिटिकल एंड इकोनॉमिकल सिचुएशन एंड देन फॉर्मिंग द पॉलिसीज पर हैव बी ऑफ मोर यूज टू दैम प्रियंका जी वॉन्ट एड टू आई जस्ट वॉन्ट से वन थिंग आई थिंक एवरी वन आउट योर इज इन अग्रीमेंट that an engagement and a constant engagement and endeavor to ensure that they get their equal space equal voice in the system is a stark reality and is something that we need to work upon and work upon together but unfortunate situation right now is anyone who is speaking up is labeled an urban naxal is labeled a maoist labeled a naxal this is the unfortunate situation and this is where i think our voices need to be spoken in one breath in the same language and say that we will continue to fight for these rights even if you continue to label us as urban naxals okay listen i am really sorry but we have time for just one last question we are actually officially out of time so i think i'll go to the right to the back the red shirt uh, yeah right there and then we'll we'll have to end for for this session i really for all the way at the back because i've been looking a little too much in the front it's not fair to the ones right at the back okay my question is to leaders who have uh, from the congress party who have been in power for most uh, you know at least at the time that i was growing up and it's it's quite tiring to talk about the issues of the opposition constantly because i think we are all we are aware of that what i would like to hear is um, a what has the party done to make sure the decentralization of power that was being discussed in the panel has happened in the time that they were in power that's that's one part of the question and part 2 of my question is if in 2019 we are vocally saying that this system is not going to work for us and we should probably look at a leader who's ready to embrace the diversity and take people along with him and learn in the process what are the three things that the party will do to make sure that this system changes and please give me concrete answers if possible is my yes. humble request concrete are you a school teacher young lady i'm just very impressed with the approach all right i think this will be a good way on which to end the thing so why don't you respond to the lady each of right. you and if possible give her three specific concrete ideas uh <laughs> only three are allowed only three allowed but if you want to give a fourth then somebody else can give you from their quota right priyanka I'll, we start I'll, with I'll you i expect you to fill up the uh, quota <laughs> I'll, i'll come at the end <laughs> so priyanka. yes three concrete ideas what we have done in terms of the past 70 years was your first question what we have done is we we ensured that there was a constitution that came into its place into its place bringing all parties along bringing all ideas along and come up with a constitution that would respect this federal structure on our way we must understand it's an ever evolving democracy and we need to keep learning from it understanding the uh, pitfalls of it understanding where we have gone wrong and we have corrected those the idea is to look for correction if we have gone wrong in some places every time we talk about the autocracy we are uh, you know taken back to the emergency question but we must understand post the emergency we were thrown out of power by the people of this country uh, mrs indira gandhi on the floor of the house apologized for the excesses that were carried out and we ensured that ever uh, after that whenever we came into power we respected the democratic principles and the constitution uh, norms that were set in place this is what we talk about when we talk about our commitment to for ensuring that the constitutional norms are not bypassed now your question to this is very clear we will ensure that whatever this one man rule 
has failed the country and it cannot be repeated again and everyone has to be taken along. Part one, the concrete. Part two to this concrete idea is ensure that whatever the constitutional norms have been set for ensuring the federal structure stays in place will be f uh, followed in totality. And if there are any weaknesses, we will do all our best to strengthen those structures. Third concrete uh, point I would give you is the interstate councils and NDCs that he was speaking about will be empowered, the MLAs would be empowered, the assemblies would be empowered, and we will work towards ensuring that every state lives up to its identity, continues to grow, continues to make its people grow, and get the autonomy that it truly, truly deserves and what the constitution has provided to them. If there are any more concrete ideas that I can, uh, that um, uh, Mr. Tharoor would like to add from the Congress, I'm sure he would also have his own ideas. So we've given you three concrete ideas. I hope Congress. you're satisfied. He's, he's he is moderating. Yes. Not oh and yes, of course. Yeah. I'm not an official spokesman of the party, that's only <laughs> I'm this uh, Kampana. You want to add? Uh, for this, <laughs> uh, she asked for the Congress. Um, in, in, in Jharkhand, yes, of course. We would like to add one thing, uh, which she also mentioned. Things you would like to see the Congress do when do. it comes back to power. <laughs> no, they are part of the Mahakat Bandhan, so they have to do well <laughs> if we do well. So yeah, uh, the Tenancy Act, which is certainly uh, affecting almost 80% of the population in Jharkhand, we will make sure, if we come back to power in 2019, we will make sure that doesn't get amended the way this government is going to amend it. That's a very specific point. Very specific, yeah. Jeff. Well, I think the basic uh, tone of that question conveys to all of us that A, the whataboutry of the last four years doesn't work. You can't keep harping on, on tumne kya kiya tha aur hum aaj That's hai. why you're there. That's why they're That's there. That's why that question was yeah, asked. exactly. But B, that we also need to come up with a very aspirational, positive campaign. We can't just keep criticizing what has happened over the last four years. Absolutely. So that's my takeaway from this question. Just to add, as a student of Indian politics, um, I mean, I agree with the points Priyanka has already made, but the 74th Amendment to the Constitution, the Panchayati Raj Amendment, was a Congress achievement. It was Rajiv Gandhi who pushed it through. And as a result, we not only have elected bodies in all the villages, but we have ensured that half of them will be presided by women. And this has been actually a dramatic improvement in terms of actually decentralizing authority, bringing it down to the lower levels. There are still flaws. I don't believe the panchayats are well enough funded. And I think that uh, I would, I've actually introduced a private member's bill in parliament urging that we should have direct elections of town mayors as well as village heads uh, with adequate budgetary authority so they can actually get things done. We aren't there yet, but the 74th Amendment has taken us a long way in the direction of decentralizing power. I must say that I'm uh, somebody on this overall debate who stands a little bit with one foot in both camps. I see the virtues of a strong center because a weak center could be more easily exploited by our enemies internal as well as external. But at the same time, I believe that the implementation of most policies really needs to come down to the lowest possible level, which to my mind is the district, not even the states. I mean, but yes, give the states the authority and ensure by law that they in turn devolve some of their authority, their fund funding to the district so that decisions are made and implemented at the grassroots where people are really affected. When Kunal said, ask the Adivasis what kind of development they want. You know, they may want schools and clinics, they may not want coal mines. Now, if you decide that the coal mine is what's going to give you the money to build their schools and clinics, you can rationalize it. But then you are actually going against the interests of people on the ground. So as far as possible, let the decisions go all the way down to the very bottom. And, and, and see how far you can take this process. Certainly, if we were to come to power, I don't think the Niti Aayog would continue as this kind of uh, irresponsible think tank. Absolutely. Uh, I think it would need to become a meaningful forum where the states can exercise, uh, can articulate their concerns and exercise some meaningful influence on the way in which central resources are allocated, central priorities are set, and development takes place. But these are all things for the future. You did ask what can we do uh, to bring about, one of you asked what can we do to bring about a different result in 2019. I'd say one thing to all of you young people, because you know, like Priyanka, I came without a political background into politics. I had the advantage that I had some name recognition from my previous life. I'm sorry, but we are out of time. Sorry, huh? I'm, I'm really wrapping up now, I apologize. So I, I did have that advantage, but I would say that youth is the right time to get engaged in these big issues we've been discussing. Young people, frankly, 
have a little more energy, a little more enthusiasm, a little more ideas than older ones, and also a little less to lose, in the sense that most of you haven't yet made the kind of lifetime commitments to wife and family and career and profession and so on. You can take the risk of trying out and seeing if you can make a difference in politics and then deciding if it's the right thing for you or not. So I would urge you all uh, in your student days to get engaged in the national issues. So is being single in politics a virtue? Well, apparently <laughs> both our major political leaders think so. Uh, they, are, they, they say they're married to the cause of the nation. Um, though in, in all fairness, uh, in all fairness, we've had, we've had uh, uh, very many leaders in our country who have been also happily married and who've also been able to give of themselves to the nation. But certainly being single at your age would be an asset in politics because a lot of, I mean, politics is not as easy as it looks from the outside to many people. Uh, it's very, very hard yards, very long hours, uh, lots of odd irregular hours, lots of commitments, a lot of need to respond to others' priorities rather than set your own all the time. So it is hard, but when you're young, you have that flexibility a little more to do that. Uh, let me end by saying, I hope you will think about these issues. Uh, I think we would all agree that Jayant was right when he said a lot of people enter politics and relate to politics through identity. But all of you as in students and educated people also probably feel that that isn't enough. That we have to judge people by performance. Let's face it, we all know at least of one state where a chief minister won election twice on identity messaging, and then the question came up, where is our Bijli, where is our Sadak, where is our Pani? And people decided they wanted performance and not just identity. It's all very well for people like us, that is the identity you relate to, to be in power. But what they do with that power, what results they deliver for you, how they change your lives, that ultimately ought to matter. So in 2019, the question I'm often asking my voters is, have you seen enough change in your own life in the last five years to say this government deserves a second innings? Have you felt that Aceh didn't have come for you? Have you felt better off in these last five years than before? And I must say, very, very, very few people seem to be able to say yes. In which case, we are saying judge by performance. There hasn't been performance, then give somebody else a chance to do better. And if they don't do well, throw them out too. None of us should have a, a God-given right to be always in power. We have to earn your trust. We have to earn your support. We have to earn your vote. On that note, thank you, Priyanka Chaturvedi, Kunal Sarangi, Jayan Chaudhary, for a fascinating discussion. All the best, Jayan.